Hey guys, so I have an exciting video for you guys today. We're gonna to be working on Project GT350, the 1966. So a lot of you guys don't know if you're not following this channel. This channel has been going on for a while and I cover all my project cars. This is my dream car that I'm building. It's a 66 Mustang Coupe. Yeah, I know it's not a fastback and I know it's not a real GT350, but my dream has always been to own a GT350 all my life, a 65 or a 66. So I ended up buying myself a 66 Mustang Coupe um, that was basically all stripped down. I've done a ton of work to this car. So I'm trying to build my own version of a GT350, a 66 classic GT350. There's different accents that I've installed. Like I have the GT350 badge in the back. We also did the Shelby drop on it, which you can't really see, but we dropped the lower A-arms a little lower, uh, put the strut bar, this strut brace here that the GT350 had. There's also a brace that was here, but we had to take it out because we put a new distributor and now it's not fitting. Another little accent we did, we put like a, a GT350 inspired steering wheel, which is not accurate, but pretty cool. There's a cool five speed right there with the Hearst shifter, pretty gnarly. And uh, yeah, so this is where we're at. So mechanically, this car is pretty much done and ready to drive and enjoy. Uh, what's up next is to get the car painted. I ran out of budget to get the car painted, but what we're gonna do is we have a lot of parts that need to be primer because it's bare metal that got stripped with, uh, like for example, this fender here was sandblasted and it's starting to get rust from my fingerprints and stuff and messing with it. So we gotta get this primer. So we're starting to put the car together. I'm gonna primer it, put it back together, make sure everything fits and aligns perfectly. And then at some point, get it off ship to get painted. But one thing I wanna to touch on that's is really interesting about the Ford Pony logo for the Mustang is really interesting. If you notice, it goes left, not right. And the reason it does that is when they were designing the Mustang, the final concept for 1964 and a half, Eli Coca, which was the, I think the general manager of Ford at the time, and he's the one that convinced Henry Ford's son to actually produce the Pony car, the Mustang, the 65, 64 and a half, and 66 to produce that car. Well, when the engineers told him, should it be going left or right? He said, it needs to go left. It needs to go to the west where, where things are changing, where things are getting better, uh, where the young crowds are like the Mustang. And I'm from California and no disrespect, I live in Texas now, but I feel like the west, California area, the car scene is a lot better. It's a lot denser than it is in Texas. Uh, maybe I'm not in the right spots, but I feel like California had a bigger car following and uh, don't get me wrong, Texas does have their cars here. I think West thinking, like you think about the gold rush, everybody went to the West. I, I kind of like, like that. I think that was pretty cool. So that's the reason why it goes to the left because it's going West. Now, another interesting story, um, the logo of this wasn't, um, the first sketch of this wasn't created by an American, believe it or not. It was actually by a Hungarian. The most interesting thing about it, which is crazy, and I'm sure a lot of you four guys don't know this and some of you might, um, the guy that carved this out, uh, he was an Olympian. Then he fought in the war, World War II, but he was the last person to join uh, modern warfare, which is tanks and stuff like that, to actually be on a horse and go to war. So the last, like, hooray, he drove with the horses, with his own pony, into war against tanks. And they were killed, all of them instantly. I believe he survived. When he survived, he became an American citizen and he made a sketch. And this sketch was made out of wood. It was this pony right here, this Mustang. It's a replica of his horse that he had in World War II. I believe the Mustang, the first generation Mustang, started it all for the young generation. It was a car to go fast, to be cool, to go to the beach, to represent the youth. It was a youth market. You know, they started the pony cars, which, which later on brought the Camaro, brought in the Trans Am, the Cudas. All those classic muscle cars, it all started with this car. And ironically, the Land of the Free, the main logo, the Mustang, was created from someone from World War II that was an opposing team, you know, to kill us. And look, it's on the iconic car, and that tells you how free America is. And I think that's such a cool story. I just wanted to share that with you guys. And I didn't want to get all political with this stuff, but I love World War II stuff. And I heard that story from Jay Leno on uh on what is the car garage or whatever that show is on youtube on the mock it's on the mock one mustang that they review cool story so i just thought you guys would like that so anyways let's go ahead and install this logo i have some pictures of some gt350s of how they install it 
and let's go do it. So right here are all the pieces you're gonna need for your 1966 Shelby GT350 grill. These pieces right here, these are two little brackets and the retainers that go behind this little pony bracket here. Um, don't think that this bracket is anything special. That's actually just a bracket off the driver's side fender. Um, but these two things are special to this kit. So th this is the part number for the kit. Um, it's called the Shelby Grill Emblem and it comes complete in that kit right there. And the part number I believe is down here. This piece has been out of stock on most popular websites for Mustang restorations like CJ Pony Parts. But I was able to find it. I went to a car show out here in Texas in Fort Worth at Motor Speedway in Fort Worth. And uh, there was a traveling, I forgot the name of the company, but they travel. Actually, this is the company, which I think they're in Oklahoma. These guys right here, whatever their name is, I'll put the link down below later. But um, those guys had it in stock. Here's it. Here's their address, actually, and their website. They're classicautoparts.com, and they're in Oklahoma. I'll put the information on, on there so you guys can find this place. But they had it in stock. I was able to buy it from them at a reasonable price. I think I paid like 28 bucks for it under 30 bucks if you can't find this kit which you probably won't you can find you can find these all day from scott drake the fender emblem and then go ahead and put it on your on your grill and i believe it's the same thing for the 64 and a half and the 66 i mean 64 and a half and 65 the only difference is you're going to have a different kind of grill let me zoom out real quick the grill that i have is from a 66 which is going to be totally different from a 64 and a half and a 65 because the 64 and a half and the 65 are honeycomb and I'll show an image of it so you guys can see it. But uh, let's go ahead and install it. I have some pictures and there's a specific count of like grills, or like little poles. We're going to count these poles from the side to up to figure out where the original one goes for the 66 Shelby. I have some pictures. All right, so you're going to have this little bracket that comes with the kit. Now that bracket and it protrudes out. You got to get that thing flat, okay? So what I did is I took needle nose. You know where the focus part is right there and I squished it. Same with the other side squished it now it's flat instead of protruding how it was now I'll grip all right so we got the red spot I had to redo it I messed up the first time I had to pull out a magazine so I looked at a car that someone built and then I looked at an actual magazine of the car and I found the right spot so you need to need a nose to push it down and I have to go fishing for my other clip because it fell but you're actually going to use the flag, not the, not the actual pony part. So let me go ahead and find that other one so I can finish this up. All right, so I was able to find the other one that went flying in the back when I had to redo this. And hit it right here. I'm going to use a needle nose. So you got these little brackets that go into the grill. You got these two and the little clip in there. All right, let me flip around and we change the position. We actually found the right spot. So there's the grill in its entirety. Got the satin black with the grill. Now it's looking like a GT350 grill. We have the grill right here. Like I said, this is for a 66 Mustang. We went ahead and painted it all satin black because I didn't like the chrome look on it i think this looks way better so what i did is i went up to the top peg and i counted one two three four five on the fifth one you're going to go ahead and line up on the fifth one you're going to go ahead and line up this edge to this edge right here and then i counted the grills down one two three and on the third one you're going to be flush and on the second to last one you're going to be flush and that's what i looked at the picture so here's a better representation of the grill i thought back there looked good because of the contrast but i think this looks a little better so what i ended up doing is i ended up counting uh, to the fifth peg from that bracket I showed you and I made sure I lined up this edge of the flag right on this edge is what it looks like in the picture and then I counted from the blades down one two three on the third one sat flush and the second to last one which this is the last blade it was flush with the second one and that's how I determined where it goes on the GT350 for 1966. So here's the book that I used to get that logo in the right spot and here is a Hertz GT350 and this is what I use to kind of find it's kind of hard but I use that on some other pictures and I think we found the right spot for that logo so I get a little impatient I went ahead and slapped the grill on so you guys can see what it looks like it's on there now let me see hold on
That's pretty sick. I love the way it looks. It's just perfect for this car. And with the satin black, it's going to look so freaking good. So that's it for the video. I just wanted to share that with you guys to do the GT350 grill. I haven't had time to really work on the car, but uh, I wanted to make a quick little video that you guys can check out that I thought was kind of cool. I messed up at the beginning, but I got it going. I think I got it in the right spot according to books and other pictures I've saw. I was, uh, in the first time I was a little confused because I went after a car I saw at a car show and uh, maybe they had changed it or whatever but i don't think it was in the right spot now i think we have it in the right exact spot so thank you guys for watching i love you guys if you have any comments please leave them down below i'll catch you on the next one